Okay, so Shadow Catcher, um, how did we do this? First, let's see what we did. If we hit render, we'll get a viewport with a lot of different render passes going through. And if we just give that a second to finish up, we're only doing 30 frames, so it won't take long. Get this warning, you can ignore that. And if I open this up, what you'll end up with is your beauty pass, which has everything. Just drag this over here. Got your everything pass, which has all the stuff in your scene. Then you also got a foreground pass, which is your actors in the foreground with um, transparency. And then you'll get what we're actually after is this one over here, where our shadows. So if I just go to use the alpha channel, you can see that we've got our shadows here, and they are semi transparent. And then we also have our Z depth over here. Um, so these other ones are garbage from previous renders. Let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to show you how this was set up. So the first thing that I did was create this shadow catcher uh, material, which I got from a render bucket, I think. A uh, big shout out to them. Thank you for helping with this. And then another guy on the Unreal Engine uh, forums that added this part down here, and I just added this minus one to get the correct color because it returns it in white, um, and we don't want that. And then, of course, we have our uh, render output, which is using the new render graph in 5.4. Um, and basically, what we're doing is we're put outputting everything, and then over here, we're outputting only the uh, foreground actors so how this works is on your deferred render you'll have a bunch of settings that you can tune and this is important because down here we'll set those settings and then you just grab one of these nodes so if you want like a png or if you want an exr or whatever connect that up to here and for the first one it's just going into a render layer which you can just render layer that's down here and it goes into the outputs. And if you want to add more outputs here, you just click here and click to add an output. And then for, for the foreground pass, we've got to hide a few things. So we set up this collection. And this collection uses, so you click on condition group to add uh, conditions. And then you click this button to add more items to this. So for this group, uh, we're adding everything in the scene. So we use an asterisk as a wildcard for everything. And then we're excluding the foreground items and the light items because in the next step, the modifier, we are hiding everything. And you want to check all four of these first boxes. So this will hide it, but it will still cast shadows and it will still affect the indirect lighting. Next, we have our environment lights. This uses the same kind of condition. So these items in my scene have these tags added to them so for the atmospheric stuff which is environment stuff if i just search for tag you'll see i have this environment tag added to it and then in the render graph i'm using that tag to filter through stuff so i have a few of these set up for different things and then over here we're telling it to just hold out these environment lights so basically it does everything that if you check all these top ones, so it will not be in the scene, but it will also be transparent. So that's the difference. If you have something that's occluding other objects and you tell it to hold out, it will also uh, make the objects behind it transparent. So it's not just hiding it in the scene, but it is using it like a mask to cut it out as alpha in your render. And I'll show you when we render this. Let me just render here for a second. And let's just hit it again. So you see this up here. Here we have our sky. But in these, we're telling it to hold out that sky. So we're still getting all the lighting information from the sky. But it's not being rendered. It's, it's just invisible. And then from that, so that's our, our foreground pass. Then we got our shadow pass over here. So a few things we've got to do here. First up. You gotta change your anti-aliasing method or you'll get weird artifacts. So just set this to multi-sample and that works. 
Then you want to add your shadow catcher material, which is this one. I'm going to add that to the render passes. Now, what you should note about this, when you add a render pass here, it will still have its default beauty pass, and this is an extra pass, like it's an additional pass. So this produces one set of garbage images that we don't have, and you just got to delete that manually. And maybe in the future, this will be better. Right, going down this list, there are a few things you got to disable, uh, like bloom. We don't want any bloom. We don't want grain. We don't want lens flares. We don't want motion blur. We don't want vignette. So these are all your effects that look good on your camera. But when we're doing the shadow, these actually messes around with how it's computed. So we don't want distance field. We don't want uh, lumen reflections. We don't want screen space IO. We don't want subsurface scattering and don't want volumetric fold. I think that's all of them. I'm not mistaken. And then we're outputting that to a PNG sequence. Here we're grabbing everything in the scene, except items that have been tagged as alpha or do not override. And then we're making everything white. So there are no normal maps on this, uh, uh, no tessellation or anything like that because it doesn't really work. So. And then again, we're using the environment and we're setting it to transparent. And then all our proxy stuff, we're also hiding our proxy stuff and we don't want it to cast shadows or anything like that. From here, we're grabbing our foreground stuff and we want to make our foreground stuff. So this is interesting what we're doing here. We're turning all of these on, but we're also turning on uh, holdout. So this means that it will do everything, but it will also cut the shadow. Uh, where you have like a contact shadow, it will also cut out that like a corner of a shadow, whatever, so you don't end up with weird shadows. And if you do it this way, you, it doesn't really matter in which order you composite it. Uh, if you put the shadow on top of the CGI, it won't matter because the shadow is cut out. And then we're doing the Z depth. Uh, so the only thing we change here is you just want to switch this out to scene depth. Um, I tried using the movie render queue uh, world depth, or scene depth world units, uh, but they just return a weird yellow kind of color, so scene depth seems to work well. That's basically it. So we separate it all out in this render graph, and then from here it produces the render layer. So if I hit render here, and to get it to use the render graph, uh, obviously you've got to click over here, and well, if this is standard, it will have something that says replace where it says you replace with preset. It'll say replace with render graph. You'll get the default render graph, but you save it out to create a new render graph and then use that to render this out. Okay, so that's basically how I did this. Just gonna save everything back down. And I will of course be making this available uh, to you guys. Um, link should be down below. And of course, we're going to add Composure to this as well. It does work with Composure, although um, the idea is that you can uh, put your CGI stuff in here and render it out without using Composure at all and then use an external software for compositing. All right, so if you have any questions, please let me know.